So we're going to work on um, these rule-based paintings today. And the rules are merely a way to <laughs> get you started, you know, to sort of uh, leap right over that feeling of, ah, I don't know what to do, I don't know where to start. So that's why you have rules. And I set up several rules of, for these paintings for you, um, which I'm going to put up on the screen in a little while. But um, basically, we're going to be using small sheets of paper. And this is um, actually uh, six inches by nine. And um, I simply took my 12 by 18 paper, folded it once halfway in the neck, and cut those in half, and then the other way halfway and cut that in half. So I got four of these pieces of paper out of one 12 by 18. Um, so, uh, now I'm just using drawing paper, but you could use something um, a little bit heavier if you'd like, like the nice BFK Reeves paper that we've talked about. But what I've got is 10 sheets to start with, and we're all going to we're going to start with 10. And the reason we start with so many is that I believe that um, you know, when you whenever you do a lot of something, there's much less pressure on um, just the one. So you feel a little bit more relaxed about working and it flows a little more freely. So my first direction was to take one of the two colors that I had asked you to mix up and simply paint the background color. This is so that we don't have white all the time. And there's nothing wrong with working on a white background, but in this case, I, I want you to see what happens when you already have a background and a flat color and um, for this particular exercise i'm going to ask you to paint half of your color as one color i mean for the half of the pieces of paper your five sheets of paper one color and five sheets another color your background and you can choose to go all the way to the edge or almost to the edge doesn't really matter i'm going to go halfway, all right, almost to the edge here, just to leave a little, I just don't want to get a table, <laughs> but, so there you, there you see, um, this paint, which has a little bit of white mixed into it, and makes it opaque, as opposed to transparent, is, just makes a very nice background, and um, a nice way to work against um, what we're going to be adding. So, my next rule is to use uh, some of the work that we've been making on um, these last couple of weeks. And as you know, um, it includes the papers that we made from our um, painting to music. And I um, just kind of did this on my own. And then all the pieces of paper that we've got where you've done your brush work, your, your black paint or ink and brush work, making contour line drawings. So this is not um, exactly what you guys have done, but it gives you a general idea. It's still brush marks on paper. So those are the two things that I'm going to make as my rules, that I always have to use some part of the, of, of, those two assignments that we did in class in my rule-based paintings. So our first rule is to color, to paint backgrounds on all the sheets of paper. Our second rule is in every, uh, well, we're actually doing collage here. In every collage piece, we're gonna use some element of either the, the um, contour line painting or the painting to music piece. So you've already got stuff to add. So that's really helpful. Um, again, instead of just, you know, feeling paralyzed by not knowing mm, what you're going to work with, you have, you have, you have things to work with just from the get go. So how would we approach this? Well, one thing you could do is tear these elements and use the torn elements in your piece. The other thing you could do is use a scissors or an X-Acto blade and cut out 
uh, those elements on, um, in your piece. I think I want to start with my painted brush strokes, and I'm going to just use a pair of scissors. So the other thing is you're going to have a time limit. So I'm going to ask you to try and do all of these 10 pieces in approximately half an hour's worth of time, which means that you don't have a lot of time to think. Another really good thing. But one thing you might do is take your scissors and you know, you have such a short amount of time, you can't afford to be precious. You can't afford to be too picky. You just have to go for it. Another really great thing to do to keep you moving, to keep you not getting stuck, is to have this element of time pressure. So I just got, I'm going to take this, I, I made a square. I don't know why I made a square, but I made a square. And I'm going to um, glue this piece down onto my piece of paper. And I'm just going to randomly choose a place to, pay, uh, to do that. So I'm um, going to glue and the glue that I'm using is actually soft gel gloss medium. Um, comes in different containers. This just happens to be one that I have easily accessible, but you can also use Elmer's glue or any kind of glue you happen to have. Um, really pretty much anything will work for our purposes. Um, yes glue is one I like to recommend because it doesn't have any water in it. And so your, your pieces of paper um, tend not to uh, curl as much. But uh, what you might want to do is just squeeze out a little bit of a, a glue onto a piece of cardboard or plastic. And then um, I'm going to use this little knife that um, just have, happen to have up here and put the glue on the back. And I, and I, and I do say, go ahead and glue things quickly um rather than thinking too much about it let your intuition guide you so i was just going to do this to the edge why am i doing this to the edge one of the things that's kind of fun to do is to try to not be predictable like my initial it, uh, thought might be to take this piece of the square and put it right smack in the middle but i know that that's something that i tend to do a lot so i'm going to just try gluing it to the very edge like this. Um, I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I'm just going to dive right in. And, you know, while I'm doing this, maybe I'll just use a couple more of these shapes that I've got. And maybe this one I'll decide to cut right around the brush stroke instead of doing a square. See, this is where you have lots of choices within the rules point is here, within the rules, you have a lot of creative possibility. And sometimes you just need the rules to help you focus a bit and not make it all quite so um, terrifying. <laughs> uh, in other words, you know, you don't get so worried about every little thing and you just have to kind of put it down and let it happen. So. So anyway, I've cut out this interesting shape here. Another thing you could do is just work with shapes. So on this one, and why don't I use this other sheet color that I've made, I'm going to glue this one. And um, you know, when you're gluing, it's nice to use a piece of paper that you don't care about so much. And then you can just use that as your background and enables you to, to get your um, adhesive. Uh, where you want it, and also enough, because you really do want to get to the edges, otherwise these pieces have a tendency to kind of peel up. All right, so this one I'm just going to kind of put right here. Yeah, and then um, why don't we go to our piece of the, the music painting and use that one now just to show you what you can do with um, that possibility. So. Maybe this one, why don't we tear? So I'm just gonna, you know, it sort of feels good to tear your work and to just learn not to be feeling precious about it, you know? Um, you can tear it 
and you don't, it doesn't matter. You know that you can make more. Um, and sometimes, you know, you just discover more beauty when you tear these up. So I made a little sort of torn circle. And I'm going to put, again, put some glue on the back. And flip this over. And back a bit with the glue. And let's see, why don't I put this one? Right over to the side because it's another thing that's a little bit more unusual. And if I see that I don't have quite enough glue and it flips up a little bit, just stick your, your glue back in there. So we have three pieces begun and it didn't take very long. So now we have three and uh, you know you're you're going to try and do ten. So that's one way to get started. Now um, uh, the next rule would be to, to, um, to create a stencil and uh, apply the stencil to uh, somewhere on your piece that you've got so far. So. Um, those of you who have taken printmaking before know a lot about stencils. <laughs> uh, but if you have not, and I don't think that's too many of you right now, what you can simply do is take a piece of paper, it doesn't have to be very big, and all you need to do really is to fold it in half, take your scissors, and maybe just cut out a shape like this. You've got a stencil. Um, maybe you want something a little bit more interesting than that, which is fine. So you go back into that shape that you've got just cut and perhaps change it a little bit, add a little bit to it. There you go. And now you've got a stencil shape that, as you can see, can really change your pieces. So um, let's go back to um, black here on this one and by the way I want you to keep one or two stencils so you do not have a zillion possibilities but you know to try and keep it very simple and when you have a stencil like this you simply just hold it down and I've got this one overlapping both the background and The shape that I put down and it doesn't matter if it's perfect you know it can be a little off but how nice I can use this again someplace um, maybe I want to just cover that one up a little bit and maybe get a little less water and a little less paint on my brush so it's a little bit more gray Try that. Pick it up. And I think I'll do that now with this next one. And maybe this one will go right off the page here. Maybe another one. Let's see. Uh, down here. Maybe I'll change the way it's it's put down. I'll go sideways instead. And I'm not judging right now. I'm just doing. I'm just playing. I'm just having fun. I'm just seeing what happens. You know, I like to use the word the words what if. What if I did this? What if I did that? Instead of I should do this or that's not a good design or um, that one isn't as good as so-and-so's, you know, or all those critical voices that we hear in our heads that try to stop us from having fun and enjoying the process. Um, and maybe this one, we don't want to use black. Maybe I want to change the color um, that I'm going to be using. And maybe I want to actually use my background color, the other pink color that I had, and 
perhaps I want to make another stencil. So let's, let's do that really quickly. Um, again, I like the idea of do this quickly, just to fold it in half. Start just something kind of random. You know, maybe that's kind of cool um, without it actually changing it. And, and again, as you can see, I'm not spending a lot of time overthinking this. I'm just trying to go very quickly with a few gut reactions. How can I take this simple setup here and make it interesting? Try things out. Um, I, I do know that people sort of bridle when I <laughs> use the word rule, you, the use the right phrase rule based painting or rule based rule based art uh, because they think that it means that it has to be a certain way. No, what you're just doing is limiting your possibilities by creating a sort of arbitrary set of rules for yourself. That's all this is just an arbitrary set of parameters. Um, limitations, if you will, that just keep you from falling into the paralysis of, I don't know what to do, and it won't be any good anyway. <laughs> so, and believe me, I've heard those same things in my own head, so I know whereof I speak, but this is a great way to just get over all of that and see what happens. So, now I've done three pieces already. Um, I don't know how long it took probably about five minutes and they're each a little bit different they're not terribly involved here um, but each one is a kind of interesting that's the oh, that's the uh, the active word interesting you know um, that's what you are uh, making these are all interesting little fairly quickly done designs that incorporate some of the things that you've already done. Okay, have fun.